Good morning, all my beautiful children, all my delicious children. My name is Devanna, and I host the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast. And I'm coming to you this morning with a few words of encouragement to all my empathetic people out there as I was laying in bed this morning trying to wake up and get this day started. I had some things stirring in my heart. And before I walk over to my gym and start my workout, I thought I would drop some wisdom on you. So this message here is for people who or have gotten away from narcissistic abuse, Machiavellian abuse, or sociopath, psychopath, whatever part of the, the dark psychological profiles that you've been influenced by. Because once you get out of it, I want to talk to you about how to begin to cleanse yourself. I need you to understand that whatever you went through was more of an emotional and spiritual battle, battle than physical. It's like if somebody hits a person with their fist, Long after that bruise is gone, that person could have like emotional and internal wounds and scarring. Okay. As the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual darkness and rulers in high places. These, these terrible people who we were in these relationships with were nothing more than conduits of the devil. You don't believe in the devil, then conduits of dark energy or whatever the fuck you want to call it, but you understand that, 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 that nothing good came out of that person. Okay. And so you got entangled with them, with their energy, with, with, with the darkness that prevails over them. And now you got to get away from all that. Now, once you're physically away from all that, just because you physically left, don't mean that, that don't mean that you're mentally gone or emotionally gone. That takes work. You know, that, that, you know, that takes, that takes a different kind of work. A large part of this is just coming to terms with what happened. Yes. If you got fooled by them, you're an empathetic person. You were big hearted, open hearted. You thought you were going to love this person, spend the rest of your life with them and everything was going to work out great. You thought no matter what problems came up, they could at least tell you the truth and that you could always come to the table like, like adults and work it out. Okay, you understand now that that's not going to happen because you're not in a relationship with an adult. You're in a relationship with an underdeveloped child running around an adult's body. Not the same. You understand that they trampled you underfoot. They abused you. They took advantage of you. This is a difficult thing to come to terms with. And look, there's people who have reached out to me and who have read comments on like Dr. Imani's channel over on YouTube. Well, these people have been in relationships with these people for like decades, only to find out that that person is not who you thought they were. Yes, people can wear a false mask for years at a time, decades even. It's a learned behavior. It, it sucks. It's incredibly difficult when you realize that they never, that they never liked you, that they only liked what you could provide for them, which was a continual sense of narcissistic supply and a continual validation. But I need you to just get it. No, they don't like you. Yes, you like them. You were not really in a relationship with them. You thought you were, but they were not there with you. They were there. People like this with narcissistic personality disorder, the sociopaths and the psychopaths out there, they love themselves above all. If you have somebody who's an introvert, you know, like a covert narcissist, you know, which is something I could speak to more because that's what my situation was. They like... You know, you'll find that they tend to always compare people to like that core group of people that they like. So I researched this and found it out, you know, you know, because they'll, they'll always compare you to like those, 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 those set group of people. So, in, so in case this is happening, I want to let you know. So like in, like in the last relationship that I was in, you know, he never would stop comparing me to like those five or seven friends that he has back in Georgia. And it was quite a bit frustrating because I was like, well, I would like to be myself. You know how that goes. I, I never got any sense out of him out of it because people with narcissistic personality disorder cannot give you closure. They don't want to give you closure. They'd rather leave you tormented and twisted because they are tormented and twisted. But God holds all knowledge and light in his hands and he showed me the truth of this in his time. People who are you're dealing with a covert narcissist who's also an introvert, which is probably how that's going to run together. They are going to have affection for the few people that they feel like they're going to be close to, 
which could be the people they grew up with. Also, the people they grew up with are going to be the last people probably to see them for what they really are. <laughs> okay, we're willing to accept that. Because it's the, the, the psychosis of this all develops in that person over time. And when you got an evil growing right next to you, it's hard for you to see it, which is a huge reason why as empathetic people can miss this shit until it's too late. Those core people are the only people who these introverted narcissists give a fuck about. Everybody who they've met since then is just cannon fodder. It's just people they've used, people they've tried to manipulate. They don't give a damn about anybody else except for those group, select group of people. Okay. That is it. It's a tough fucking pill to swallow when you consider all the activities these people are willing to go and do with you and it's all been entertainment. And their heart was never in it because they have never moved on from those people. I can prove this to you. When I was in the relationship, you know, he would always have dreams about being back there with those people or back in, you know, grade school. You know, he never moved past that phase of his life, yet he was out here in the streets trying to act like he's moving forward when he never did move forward. You know, people like that live in torn existence. So what that meant is that every day with me, he had a mask on and that whenever he talked to them, he was living his truth. Speaking of the future, the only thing he was concerned about is making just enough money to take care of his friends back home. These were his words. He only wanted to make so much to take care of them. And then maybe he may have mentioned me at the end of the conversation or the sentence or something, you know, just a little trickle. And, and I was so confused about this, but if studying it more deeply, this is how the fuck these people are. You know, I accepted this and it's like the light bulbs came on, you know, when I, when I looked and realized what this person really was. And just what the, the amount of deception that they're capable of. It was like from, it was like from the last airbender, not that whack ass, weak ass avatar movie M. Night Shyamalan dis disgraced and disrespected the world with the actual anime. At the end of it, when Fire Lord Ozai knocked Aang's little cute bald headed ass up against the rock and it hit him back, that rock poked him in the back of that. They poked him in the back where Lazula had shot him with that lightning bolt and caused his energy to get tied up. Understand when you've been in a relationship with someone with narcissistic personality disorder, those other psychological profiles, you, your energy is locked up. It is not flowing free. And until God comes and knocks some sense into you, like what happened to Aang, you're just going to sit there and let this person walk all over you continually. It's like, so when Aang hit that fucking rock, the Sergeant Fire Lord Roku, all his past lives just like turned and looked at him. They were like, finally, bitch, you done woke up and you fucking get it. Okay. I entered into like a state of nirvana. Okay. I'm sitting here like feeling like I'm fucking floating and shit as I'm understanding partially what I already knew, but it being clarified and refined in my mind gave me so much confirmation, positive, truthful validation. And, and then I know that I'm not crazy. You know, I understood what I had been involved in. I'm saying all this to say that I want y'all to come to terms with what has happened. And I need you to begin to get away. You're not going to be able to see clearly what all you've been through until you get away from this person. So the three tips that I'm going to give you today. Only applies to people who are no longer around the person. You cannot be friends with somebody who hurt you like this. I tried that with the person who I broke up with and even being around him then was just more negativity. It was more chaos, more little things he would say to try to taunt me and to try to get a reaction out of me. And it was just so pitiful, just so damn pitiful. In the, even in the face of defeat, a narcissist can only do more of the same. They're like, may I have some more, please? More, please. More torment, more chaos, more, more division, more hate, more self-loathing. It's like, it's like you can't, like, you, the only thing you can do is do what Jesus said. From such, turn away. Leave these goddamn people with these reprobate, tick-ass minds. Let them alone.
we cannot save them. We tried. Just as sure as God tried to reach after the children of Israel all throughout the Bible, and they trampled God underfoot just like they did Jesus. Jesus reached after the children of Israel. God reached after the children of Israel. And where did the children of Israel want to go? Reach after everything else. It really fucks you up when you're reaching out for somebody and they're reaching out for, for other people, other experiences. They, 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 they don't want you. They want you, but then they don't. Ain't nobody got time to live in a purgatory like that. Bitch, either be in or out, back or forth, up or down, left or right. You cannot live in this in-between fucked up ass purgatory. <laughs> it's that No, nobody wants that. It's unhealthy and it's unwhole. It's just a chaotic, hectic hell here on earth. And we have enough problems and to be dealing with a twisted and confused individual. There are billions of people in this world. Go and find you friends and associates who speak peace. <laughs> get you somebody spiritually minded and and if you're not spiritually minded then heaven help you because you're dealing with a problem that is highly spiritual in nature but i would rather be one of the sheep getting trampled underfoot like god said would happen and worse things you know are going to happen to those of us who believe because god is getting us ready for heaven and that he's growing us spiritually and growing us and maturing us internally by these bad experiences you're not gonna grow when everything is cool and copacetic I was watching John Wick 4 the other day, and my favorite fucking line, I'm paraphrasing, it was something like that, that, that Japanese dude said something like, I'm super excited about this, I'm getting ready to head, head to Japan soon. He said something like, you know, what good is friendship if you only, you know, only if you're only about that life when it's convenient? <laughs> you know, it's not about the convenient times, it's about worse times. That is when you really prove your worth. When you're with a narcissist, when shit gets sticky, that's when they turn to their manipulations and their, me and their mechanics because their minds are not developed enough to handle the full spectrum of human emotions. And so when shit gets weird, then they start playing the victim and lying and everything. For the rest of us, that's when we show more love. There's too much of a difference. You're an empathetic person. They're not. You've got to get away from them. Stop trying to negotiate with it, rationalize it. It will not work. <laughs> And it's going to take them years to get their problem solved because they've been hateful, hateful little bitches for years. And so they don't get to just quickly turn a light switch and go off and have a happy existence. And nope, all their dirt has got to come back to them. All their karma has got to come back to them. And then they've got to actually do the work and be consistent about it before God's going to take them seriously enough to grant them the sort of deliverance that they need. But they can't say that deliverance has not been offered to them because the empathetic person that was with them would have helped them. And it's not just me. All my homegirls that are going through the same they're shit with people have tried with these men. And I've even started to meet men who have been fucked over by narcissistic women. Not a lot, maybe two or three. Mostly, though, it's dudes, though, that have this fucking personality disorder. But, you know, even, even those homies tried with those fucking heifers. Okay, and the bitch wouldn't act right. And so, <laughs> it's, it's, so... As a queer man, I can totally call a woman a bitch, you know, because I am that bitch and, you know, it's just the way it goes. Deal with it. And so empathetic people, first thing I need you to understand is that, you know, if they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. If you don't believe in Jesus and understand that there are people that are conduits of dark in this world, are conduits of light. Dark forces are bullying forces. They like to come and force themselves upon you and do things like that. Light isn't like that. Light is light is more tender. It's, it floats. It's there. It's available. It's not going to be a forceful thing. And so, just as sure as Jesus went down in the grave, you died when you were in a relationship with a narcissist. You died. Unfortunately, I have known the people to physically be killed by the damn narcissist. And you have to really, really watch that shit with covert narcissists because they keep too much of their emotions bottled up, at least with an overt narcissist like Trump's crazy fucking ass, who says the quiet part out loud on a damn near daily basis. No, on a daily basis. At least, you, at least you fucking know what's going on with them. A covert narcissist? Oh, trust me, they think just as much as an overt or a malignant narcissist. And there's so many different, there's like seven types of narcissists out there. They, their minds are not still, even though their mouth is, that is more dangerous. And what happens is they bottle all that hate, rage, anger, resentment up until when they burst, sometimes they lash out and hurt people. 
okay? Do not play with these people. They are very, very volatile. They are entirely unstable. And it is not wise for you to, to, to stay around these people. But you died either, unfortunately, physically, even damn sure emotionally and mentally, you will never, ever be the same person. I need you to just come to terms with that. Whoever you were, whatever you were before you were in, entwined with this person, is that person's gone and she ain't coming back. And this is a beautiful thing because you get to be reborn. Jesus went down in that grave. Three days later, he got up and he said, behold, all power has been given into my hands. He was refined. He was a, a, the, a higher version of himself. We had to die after dealing with these people, but we get to be reborn again. They still have to deal with all the things that they've done, but our mind cannot be on them. It has to be on ourselves. We must become unattached from these people. But rejoice in the fact that you've been counted among the righteous and the empathetic and counted worthy to suffer for righteousness sake, because you tried to do a good thing for somebody who was undeserving of that good thing. Okay. It's no different. Jesus and God have reached out to people into this world for years and people just want more of their same vices. The children of Israel did the same thing. God's like, I'll give you all these things and I'll work with you. Okay, fine. You rejected the angel food from heaven. I'll give you these birds instead. You know, God was like begging people to just be with him and just to, to act right, to live right. And they just didn't do it. God got tired of the asses and killed them. And so, but it wasn't like done overnight. He strove with them for a fucking long ass time before he made that happen. And so, you know, sometimes people want to talk about God like he's so vicious and mean, you know, but they don't, they don't, they, they forget the part where, you know, first of all, he's God and he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do and owe a human a fucking bitch ass explanation. But, but, but oftentimes, you know, he, he really, really let himself be disrespected for a long time before he would execute judgment and wrath upon the children of Israel, you know. You know, you know, they, some people like talk about God, like he's mean, but they missed the part where he was patient first, <laughs> you know, and look, and if you're dealing with a narcissist, they don't always recount the part where, where they got, where they felt like they played the victim, that they're not going to talk about the part where you were like nice. That's something that's called narcissistic amnesia. <laughs> it's a thing, honey, that narcissistic amnesia, look it up, bitch is where they have that selective memory that paints them as a victim, but then they forget the good shit other people have done, <laughs> okay? And they forget the bad shit they've done. If, but like I said, they don't get to just skip on and have a good peaceful life like that. And just because you see them making money, going out on dates, finding people to sleep with and all that stupid dumb shit that, that they're just letting the devil use to keep them entrapped. They're doing everything but facing themselves and dealing with their emotions. It's a silly, simple-minded way to live. That is not happiness. Happiness is a state of mind. Happiness is a state of spirit. It's a state of heart. It, happiness is not a state of activity. It is not a state of what can I go do? Who can I go do? Who can I go suck energy off of today? Or who can I go be codependent and hang around? Happiness is, how many, is not how many trips can I take. Happiness is not how much money can I make. Happiness is do I know who the fuck I am and why I am? And then when I go out and engage with the world, am I living my purpose? Am I shedding love or am I siphoning love off of people? Happiness is being in line with the divine, not just busy bodying. You know, all that is is distraction and activity and foolish people will fall for it. We empathetic people are not going to be this way. So get your minds off of these people. I'm saying all that to say that, okay, most people, the narcissist will leave the person which can leave you feeling abandoned, which can leave you wondering what they're doing and all of that. Fortunately, in my case, I left the narcissist, but that doesn't usually happen. So you have got to, you do got to stop, baby. Them leaving you was a blessing. That was the best thing that could have happened to you. Because look, you're going to struggle regardless. You're either going to struggle trying to stay in a relationship with the motherfucker. You're going to struggle trying to be friends with the motherfucker. <laughs> or you're going to struggle after you leave with the motherfucker trying to get all of their dark fucking ink and tar out of your soul, psyche, and mind. But in all three instances, guess what, bitch? You will struggle. <laughs> hey, blessed are the people who, when they first meet people like this, which is a power I've now gained and I can spot this shit, I'm like, bye, bitch. Mm -mm. 
Mm-mm. 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 I, I'm not. I'm not even talking about trying to have sex in your body. You know, that's not even much important. I'm talking about just basic ass friends, business associates, anything like that. As soon as I meet somebody, I don't give a shit what the potential dynamic is. Once I can sense that narcissistic personality disorder in them, I run away from them like a fucking goddamn roadrunner from Wally Coyote. Okay. Or the motherfucking fucking cat or fucking rat shit from Tom and Jerry shit. I get the fuck out of there. It's an interesting dynamics though, because at the same time, if the spirit tells me to minister to somebody, then I also have to minister to them. So I'm, so I've learned how to like shield myself psychically, spiritually to give a word to people like this when I meet them, but also get the fuck out of there too. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting skill set that I've had to develop in this particular life that I live. And I, but for you, your first priority is to leave. Now, once you have, once you come to terms with the fact that you're never going to be the same person, then you can, then you must change. It is not uncommon for people to get a new name. I mean, legally change their names after they leave, leave get out of a relationship with a narcissist person, you know, and, and you have to, I, I just, this is super important. So you're going to have to have a counselor to do it. You can go to that blog that I made. It's called Ethan's Sex Messages Revealed, where I went in there and listed all of his damn dirt and shit that he did in, in everything in order to help you all understand that the shit is common and everything like that. But nevertheless, in that blog, I put in there resources like narcissistic recovery groups and different things like that. Go to that blog at sexdrugsandjesus.com and look it up. And it'll help you to find ways, even if you're find ways to come up out of your situation, even if you haven't left the person or you know, they haven't left you and you know, the shit ain't right. And bitch, we be knowing. Don't we though? We know. You can at least attend some of these groups and begin to let that seed, the good positive seed be planted in you that you're not crazy. What you're seeing is, is actually accurate and, and talk to other people who are out. So you can begin to envision that. Because when you're with a narcissist, you're under the spell they've cast on you and you don't see a future without them. And once you get away from it, your heart is going to lurch and want to go back to them. But bitch, you're going to have to be stronger than that. So many of us left and went back. I did that shit too. But this time when you leave, you got to go and stay gone. <laughs> but as long as you were breathing, you could start all over again. As Dave called this song says, which I love so fucking much. Hope I get to meet that man one day and that beautiful woman who sang that song. Once you leave, that means you're out of the house, bitch, not in the other half of it. <laughs> you got your finances separated, got the custody with the kids worked out. All of this isn't done. You in your own place. Okay. And you're not talking to this person no more. You deleted the pictures. You're not ruminating over the text messages. Okay. I would have deleted all of my text messages if not for the fact that I might need to call upon that for material for the book I'm working on. But I also don't sit around and read through the damn things either. So they're non-existent to me. But I know some of y'all like to go back and look through that shit. Stop. All that is is a part of their energy still rubbing off on you. That's why you can't be friends with them. Because every time that you go around them, that badass fucking energy is just reinfecting you and pulling you back down. So, you're, so I need you to stop your bleeding heart from bleeding, at least for this one person. And just do what the Lord told you. And from such, turn away. Leave that person alone. It's okay to mourn them. You know, in the Old Testament, King Saul was a total narcissist. He tried to gaslight the prophet Samuel, tried to play a victim and blame everybody else for the bad decisions that he made. Textbook narcissism. Because y'all narcissists are controlled by the devil. And so from the first liars in the Bible on down to the current ones, that's why they're, that's why they're so damn predictable. That's why most of them cheat. Most of them, all of them lie and gaslight. They have repetitive behavior because they're controlled by the same devil. This is not complicated once you actually learn and you can track the patterns. You see a narcissist, you get in a relationship with narcissists, they're going to cheat. Eventually, they're going to want more variety, blah, 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 blah. I heard my, my, the ex used to say all this shit. And now that I'm studying it, okay, it's the same shit. Rinse, wash, repeat, same tape, different person. Okay. And, and, and Samuel had to finally cut Saul loose because God commanded him to. God got pissed off with Saul and his narcissist again as ways. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm repent that I even made him king. He's been rejected. 
and, and, and Samuel tried to intercede for, for Saul and the Lord would not hear him because God was dying with him. The Lord said, a liar will not tarry in his sight. You cannot negotiate with somebody who's not going to tell you the truth. Some of these poor women out here have got to, have to give their men fucking lie detector tests, bitch. I used to try to track Ethan in my fucking phone because I didn't believe I had to, I just never trusted his full word. And I knew that he was going places that he wasn't telling me. The few that I caught or just a few that I caught, that boy did far worse, <laughs> you know, but the Lord let me find an, just enough of what I could handle and enough to motivate me to finally turn him loose permanently for once and for all. But trust me, these people are out there doing whatever it is that they please. And it doesn't matter how it affects you or anybody else. So stop being silly. And I mean this with love. Stop being silly and thinking that person's ever going to change. Let them go. Samuel delivered his final message to Saul and told him everything was going to change. The kingdom had been rent from him because he would not be true before the Lord. He, he insisted upon lying and his ways caught up to him. And the Bible says that Samuel mourned for Saul, you know, for so long that the Lord told him, how long did you go mourn for Saul? You know, he cried over the loss of this man and what he could have been. I feel the same way about the ex. You can, it's okay for you to hold space for that, but you also have to let that person go. You're not going to be able to fix them. There's too many learned bad behaviors between the two of you. It is not your place to save them. Stop and turn away from them and turn into yourself. All that energy that you put into that evil bastard. Okay. Put that into you. <laughs> put that into you because they, they are never, ever, ever going to give you half of the attention, not even a modicum the attention that you give them. If you, if you observe that, they're just sitting there letting you shower all that love upon them. They're not doing that. All they're doing is giving you little breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. You're, you're so star for a compliment, for a kind word, for that one time that you go out and you don't have an argument, you know, and you think that that's going to happen and be that way forever. Imagine a different life where you're with somebody who sees you eye to eye. They flourish you with compliments and flowers and beautiful things and all the things you love and want. You don't even have to ask them to do it because they already want to. They're so motivated. They meet you halfway. They tell you the truth. They are where they say they're going to go, you know, and, and, it just, and, just, and it's just fucking beautiful. That's available to you if you let that other person go. Okay. My situation is not as bad as others. And I am so thankful that things that could trigger me don't. I hear, you know, just, just things that could. Like I said, I don't ruminate over the text and shit like that. I'm like, why would I? I'm not the one who fucked up our relationship and caused it to end. But what the fuck would I do? I'm not going to torture myself, you know, anymore. And so then I already let him do that. Never again. But my God, like I said, like I don't have kids. Even though with, with, with the ex, there was no business interest tied up. No real estate, no nothing. I met somebody the other damn day. Her covert narcissist. I mean, her, her fucking narcissist. I don't know if they're covert or not. Had a whole family across town, bitch. Here in fucking Baton Rouge. Okay. It's like, it's, so, so the, like I said, these people grow in these problems. Okay. I'm sure that the, the person who had this secret family didn't start out that way. They probably started with a few online engagements, which is still a spiritual exchange. Then they just probably started cheating. You know, when they got comfortable with that, then they, then they set up a whole family. You see how that, that person who, who, who was evil like that, that narcissist grew in their wickedness. Like we grow in righteousness. There's people in this earth who are going to grow in wickedness. Okay. If I'd have stayed with, with, with that ex, eventually he would have done the same damn thing. <laughs> okay. He's already running around doing who and what the fuck he wanted. If, you know, once they feel like they can get away with that, why not go to the next level? I wasn't about to sit there and play a fool. Not that I saw him for what he really was. And I encourage y'all to stop. What I'm saying is this, leave them, feel sad about it and all of that bitch, but stay gone because you're dealing with a person that you don't know. You do not know them. You have a huge fucking question mark in front of you. You, do, you don't know the first true thing about this motherfucking person. There's a stranger in your house. It took a while to figure out, come on, come on, come on. I know y'all know that song. You can't be who you say you are. You gotta be someone else. <laughs> Who the fuck is you? Bitch, you will never know because they're never going to take that mask off and show you. So leave while you can and you still have life in your body. The second thing is you need to get baptized. Okay, if you don't believe in Jesus and all of, and all of the Trinity, then you need to do some sort of spiritual ceremony. 
okay, could be ayahuasca, could be peyote, could be something, but you need to, you need to, you need to get baptized because baptism represents the ending of one man or woman or whatever, or whoever in the rising of a new one, you go down one way, you come up a different person. Jesus went down to the earth. He came up a different person. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. He came up and the Holy Ghost appeared upon him as a dove. It changes you. You must wash away the old person. Okay, it is symbolic of a transition. It is symbolic of change, powerful change. Like I said, if you don't believe in baptism, sure, go find some other version of it. But the point is that you're dealing with spiritual evil, that shit has to be exercised up out of you. And you need to be fucking cleansed. People here local in Baton Rouge, I can baptize you. Anybody really can if you have enough faith. You know, if you believe, you can get God to move and do a great many things. There's nothing in the Bible that says you have to be a minister to baptize. He just says that if you believe, all things are possible. But I am, you know, a licensed minister. For those of you who just are, you have that stuck in your head and you feel like someone just has to, I can do it. I can make that shit happen for you. But it's not necessary. It was so fucking funny when I, when I got like ordained and licensed and everything. I'm probably the most non-Christian person who believes in Jesus that you'll like ever meet. But, you know, and I, I got this because I wasn't going to marry people, you know, marry my friends and people, you know, because I got tired of them being rejected by these fucking conservative ass churches here in Baton Rouge. And so I was like, fuck, I'll do it myself. Fuck all this bullshit. And so I go down to the county clerk's office after I got my, my minister's license and everything. It's very contemporary, modern building. And then this, this, this bitch pulls out this fucking leather bound brown scroll book and plops it on the table like some Dungeons and Dragons shit. I'm all like, okay, <laughs> can my fucking scribe fetch me my tongue and quill then? So I can ink my name in the scroll. It was like, it was like the most, like, I felt kind of honored and also kind of like weird about it too at the same time. And that, a lot of things make me feel weird. When you get your minister's license here in Baton Rouge, you've got to go put your name on the book. This, this official fucking book with like, I'm like, you might as well have had like a fucking candle with like a fucking vamp, a Dracula, Dracula fucking ink seal on it or some shit. It's like the most weird, wild fucking thing I've ever seen. And I put my name in that book and then got the fuck up out of there because it was like kind of like weird. But I digress. But anyway, I'm here at Baton Rouge. I am a licensed minister and I can baptize you if you have left the person and if you're serious about it. Don't come to me with no bullshit. If you're still playing around with this, toying with this idea, like it's going to work and all of that, girl, I pray for you that you come out of it because they are never going to change. And not especially not as long as you're there being their crutch. The best thing you can do for them is leave them. Now, if they dumb enough to go and find somebody else to be codependent with and just cling to them, well, then that's on them rather than taking advantage of the opportunity to heal and wonder why they keep getting left. Okay, but you cannot fix them. You will not change them. Get yourself baptized. You need to go through a spiritual ceremony. That is tip number two. The third thing, the spirit reminded me of this key ceremony that Evangelist Nelson did one time in church. The Holy Ghost had her. She blessed the water and made it holy. And then everybody put, they put their keys in it. Why? Because keys represent authority, access, power. There's spiritual connotations to everything in this life. For the movies we watch, <laughs> to the sex we want to go run out and have, to, to the things we allow ourselves to be exposed to through our cell phones, to what we fail to do. You know, even being lazy and setting down is gathering stagnant energy, which is called blockages within you. There is spirit everywhere. A fool will deny that. A wise person will embrace that. Period. She blessed this water. She prayed over this keys. So sometimes your access needs to be cleansed. Keys to the office, flee keys to your house. The way this applies to you is sometimes we've given these people's keys to our houses, homes, apartments, and condos, and then we went and got those motherfucking things back. When you get those keys back, you can discard that key and throw it the fuck away. But maybe you can't afford to rekey the house. Okay. Or maybe you don't want to throw the key away or whatever the fucking case may be, but all your keys, nevertheless. Do this. You get you a bowl or use a sink and put you some sea salt in it. 
and put them fucking keys in there just for like five minutes. Okay. And cleanse that shit. You know, they strip all of their negative energy away from your keys. Okay. Because the, what they represent is too powerful. What keys represent is too powerful. You don't go around just handing out keys to the place that you live. You might go out on dates with all kinds of people and have sex with all kinds of people and take trips and have print funds and high five but with all kinds of people, but you don't just will willy nilly hand out a key. That's like a important decision to make. And so when you have to take something back from somebody, you know, you're not just revoking a key. You're telling this person you have been rejected. You know, you can't come in here when you want to no more. Trust is broken. Okay. That has to be spiritually washed away. Take them keys and not just the house key you gave them. If that key's been on a key ring or next to other keys. And just every now and then, it's just good to do this with your keys. Take them motherfuckers and suck, give them bitches a salt so Connie. And strip that evil off of there. Pray over it. Meditate. Send positive vibes. Whatever works for you. And then, and then you will get a reset of sorts. And take the time to invite God, and 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 take on the spiritual element into everything in your life because you are not just a physical being. You are a soul too. And we have got to start tending more to that aspect of us, or we will fall out of balance. I'm gonna say it again. You are not just a physical body. You are mind. You are spirit. You are a soul. You have a heart. It is the secrets of the heart that influence this world. Okay. Out of the abundance of the heart flows the issues of life. Is what Jesus told us. Everything starts as a thought. Then we materialize that somehow. Everything starts on the inside. So I need y'all to get more prayerful, get more spiritual, and, and stop living on autopilot or stop, and stop acting like this physical world is all that there is to it. There is a spiritual side to everything. I'm praying for the Lord to send more dreams to people to send more angels, to send, or send his spirit. Because it is prophesied that the spirit will be poured out upon all flesh, you know, you know, at the end of days. And I'm not saying the world's going to end today. Who the fuck knows? A lot has to happen before that comes, but you don't know if your world is going to end today because tomorrow is not promised. Don't be a fool and think it's guaranteed for you to get old or to live a certain time. And so, so get your spirit right. Get some spiritual understanding. I've been praying for spiritual understanding for y'all. You know, where is it? Where, where, where is the spiritual understanding? People know how this world works. <laughs> when it comes down to something about God and you get in the prayer group, people be looking at me like fucking deers in the head. Like, I'm like, they're like, what? I just look at them right back. Like, girl, <laughs> girl. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, the website is sexdrugsandjesus.com. Let me give you a quick recap. Once you have gotten away from the narcissist and only once you have gotten away, and I mean seriously gotten away, come to terms with the fact that you were abused and used and that the person never liked you. It rejoice in the fact that this puts you more in alignment with the spirit of Christ. If God and Jesus got used and spit on and trampled underfoot, so will you. Just be thankful you are not the one doing the hurt. Number two, you need a spiritual ceremony to cleanse you of the evils that you took on. Baptism, some ayahuasca, some other psychedelics, some other sort of shaman-led thing, something. If you're here in Baton Rouge, reach out to me and we'll talk about a baptism for you. The third thing is a key ceremony. You need, to, you need to cleanse your keys, take them back. You know, for if you have, have left them with this person. And look, I wanna be clear, leaving this person is not just physically leaving them. You cannot leave question marks over the dynamic of your relationship. One person I know left the narcissist, but they were also talking about, this is like months of almost a year later, and they're talking about some, well, I don't know, we're going to be friends. Like, wait a minute, that hasn't been stated. Don't you leave that possible door open. You have got to tell them for sure. We are not friends. We are not lovers. This is, you have got to say it. I don't care how much it's going to hurt you. The saying it releases you from that person. You know, it, 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 you know, y'all got to be broken free from that person fully. Don't leave them little dangling tidbits of connection because that's all that a devil needs to rip you, to, to reel you right back in. Get fully away from that person. And so, um, and then go cry, girl. I know your mascara going to be all over the fucking floor, as was mine. But bitch, you gonna breathe again and you gonna get better. But you ain't gonna never get better if you stay in a relationship with somebody with, with narcissistic personality disorder. I can guarantee you that. You ain't never gonna improve. 
And so wash your keys up or throw, throw the fucking things away or rekey the house, but you got to do something with those keys. Sexdrugthegeetle.com. My name is Devan and it's been a pleasure as always, darlings. And just remember that everything is going to be all right.